So we're in the machining area. This is really where I get excited, man. This is where the metal hits the metal. They're cutting steel. They're doing all kinds of great stuff with the engineering data. You can see over there, he's working on the tombstone. He's mounting all the components. And basically, take a look at that carriage. It's gonna grab that tombstone, put it in position to where it can do the, the, the accurate machining that it needs to do. It's an amazing process, and the, the amount of automation built into the whole thing really influxes all that quality that we've, that we've been talking about all day here at ADEC. So I'm here with Brian. Hey. How's it going, Brian? Good. What are you gonna show us today? Uh, we're just gonna bring up the, the fixturing that's holding the parts we've been talking about, or gonna talk about in a little bit. Okay. Uh, so we just kinda get an idea of what is in reality what we have versus what we work with in models. Nice. This is actually parts that have already been physically actually machined. Okay. Um, they go in, these are all pre-painted. We actually are painted before we, we get them. Nice. And then so we don't have to mask them later. Right. Um, but yeah, this one is one, you can see that there's no holes in here, and then it'll run part of it, and then we'll flip it up, and I can put the holes in on the second side. Yeah. So it's kind of start and a finish part here. But yeah, these are all done. They come from here, we load them, they go to the machine, come back, and then we re change them out and put them back in and send them again. So this Makino here, it takes a, it takes a certain kind of code yeah. in order for it to, yeah. to determine what tool it needs and everything. How do you go about uh, assigning all the code okay. to, uh, to the machine so it'll cut the parts right? Yeah, what we do is we'll have engineering take and, and actually build a model of this entire tombstone, the fixturing clamps, and then they'll import it to me. I'll take it and import it into our CAM software. And then at that point, we can actually model tooling and we'll actually apply tools to those models and go ahead and run it and we can watch it in the in the actual computer simulation nice. before we ever get it to the machine. So you're going to take the engineering model, bring that into your machine tool environment and generate the code that's going to run this Makino here? That's correct. Awesome. You want know, to show me what it looks like? You bet. We can go ahead and take a look awesome. at that. Awesome. Let's do it. All right, Brian, so we just saw the Makino in action and all the parts being turned on that thing. So as I understand it, you probably get what? 2D drawings and then you model, remodel these things so you can regenerate your machining code? Originally, that's how we used to have to do all that is all in here from a drawing. Yeah. But now we actually are able to get the solid models uh, actually imported. We have engineers that, that draw the solids up and then they import them to me. And then from there, I actually import them into our, our CAM software, which allows me to add code to that, mm. and then we can send it from there on into the machine. So, again, yet another example right down here where they're reusing the engineering data for their purposes. So in this purpose, we need to create machining code that plugs directly into these machines so that you can put metal to metal and start cutting. Now we can actually run the simulation on the computer and actually see where interferences could come in, and we we're able to fix that before it actually goes to the machine. Nice. So we can watch it, see exactly what it's doing, making sure that we're clearing all the clamps, in this case are, are blue, and we're not going to run into any clamps or, or material. As we go through, if engineering comes up with this part has to be changed for some reason, the casting has changed, um, they will be able to go ahead and change their solid model and download that model to me, and then I'm able to actually overlay that model right into the existing fixture that we have here and then go in and maybe remove a few features that we were cutting or move them to a different location. Hmm. And then at that point, just recode it out, send it back to the machine after we've verified it in, in the simulation. And then we're off and going again with the new rev on that particular part. Nice, so if engineering makes a change to, to this, let's say they want to change mm -hmm. the location mm -hmm. from up here to down here. Correct. I mean, yes, the casting needs to change, mm -hmm. so we need to, we need to tell the guys in the tooling department mm -hmm update the casting, but you need to also update your tooling paths. Correct. They'll redo the model to make it exactly, <clears throat> excuse me, what what we have now, the new mm -hmm. version of it, then I just import that and lay it right over top of the existing model I have, and I'm able to just take and remove or move the features to where they are now. Mm -hmm. All right, so the models that you're getting to generate your machining code come mm -hmm. from engineering. Now, they do. You, you use you use Vault to get that information? We are using Vault. Uh, originally, it just used to be out kind of on the network, but now it's in a controlled environment, which is the vault system, and that's where everything is stored. The engineering all goes 
to that vault, we're able to come and find them there and, and draw them out. So we're all working from the same pool of, of information. Yeah, it sure beats trying to search over, over networks and all those other types of problems you used to Somebody used to could have, right? pull that out and be changing it and, and it may not be the same as what you're going after. So this way it's all kind of in one area. So you're always getting the same model that, that we're working on. Nice, yeah. nice. Well, Brian, thanks a lot for showing us what you're doing with the engineering data. I, I, you know, the, what you're delivering, uh, like you said, is, is, is to a quality that, that you expect out of every aspect of your organization. And uh, really appreciate you sharing it with us today. Not a problem. All right, Thank thanks, you. Man. Next, we're going to head over to the sheet metal shop to figure out how they can go from folded part to flat to nest to machine within 15 minutes.